welcome to Coaches at Crown Brew Getting Coffee. I've got a great guest today, a legendary SIU football coach, the winningest assistant coach in SIU history, and his name is Pat Poor. And uh, I can't wait to have a conversation with a longtime coach, a great friend, and a great mentor to me, a guy I've learned a lot of football from. And Pat, welcome. It's good to have you. Thank you. I've been, I've been looking for, as soon as you started doing this, I was like, man, I got to get on that thing. <laughs> you said. Because you and I always have great conversations. Oh, we do. We've had a numerous podcasts that were never filmed, but they could have been, but should have been. But I want to run through your bio real quick, Pat. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank Crown Brew again for letting us do this. I want to thank Oh, Swinford Media for allowing this to happen, of course, and Ross and Abby are both here today. And I want to thank my buddies at Adrenaline Fundraising for your fundraising needs. They blessed me many, many times over with lots and lots of money uh, to help my program and, and uh, made a big difference in, in our success and able to do a lot of things in our program we couldn't have done otherwise. So take a give a shout out to Jeff Scott and his crew uh, and Matt and his crew there, and uh, they'll do a great job for you, raising money for your program. So Pat Poor's bio, when I, when I get these, I always go through them, and I, I love hearing what you've done and how you've done it, and I start gleaning questions out of it. I've known you a long time, but there's a lot of things about this I did <laughs> not know. So I knew you were born, in, you were born and raised in Kansas. Stockton, Kansas. Yeah, um, and you uh, were a multi-sport athlete. Uh, you end up going to college at Fort Hayes State. Correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and I love this. Do you still hold the career interception record there? No, it got broken by a guy that I recruited. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and little, I, I think I was the last two-way player there. Wow, you were. I started at free safety, and we had a, a backup quarterback. Jeff Miller blew his knee, and I had gotten recruited there as a quarterback. Wow. And uh, so that was kind of my first initiation of the wristband. I think I had 10 plays. <laughs> and uh, we had an All-American quarterback, Robert Long, and uh, I always give him crap that yeah. I have a better passing completion percentage. Yeah. I was like three for four in like mop-up duty. Yeah. That's great. Um, I, I assume that right after you were done playing, you stayed as a, as a GA yes. at Fort Hayes. Then I've got you uh, defensive backs coach a, a, a year later. And, I, and every, as along the way here, it says head baseball coach also. Yes. So yeah. you had double duty. You had football, and then you took the baseball job. Yeah, it, it was truly uh, kind of like the Cardinals manager. I was, I, it was, I kind of oversaw things, so to speak. <laughs> uh, yeah, weird short story on that. Uh, sitting in the office, I got a Kansas City Royals T-shirt on, a St. Louis Cardinals visor on. The AD had gotten in a riff with the head baseball coach. He, he left, and the guy's coming down the hallway, and he looks in there, and he's like, hey, you, uh, you a baseball guy? I was like, well, you know, my dad did some yeah. my kind of minor league stuff, and he's like, how would you like to be the head baseball coach? And I was like, I, I got spring ball. And he's like, don't worry about it. Yeah. Just show up. And, yeah. so, and actually, the guy who did a tremendous job is the head coach at Neosho Junior College in Kansas, uh, Steve Murray. And, uh, yeah, so I'm cool. And I, I don't think and, I'm going in the Hall of Fame no, for baseball. But that's not, and that's not the only one. Then uh, you end up being the offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about uh, trading sides of the ball, but you become offensive coordinator and head women's softball coach a year later when you go to, or two years later, when you go to Colorado School of Mines. You became the defensive back coach, special teams, and head women's softball coach. Yeah. And, and so you've got these... Uh, these situations coming up where you've got a multi-sport player and a multi-sport coach. And taught classes. Oh, wow. Um, that's, you know, people don't realize that era until I came to Southern Illinois. That was actually the first job that was strictly football. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I actually taught uh, motor learning at Tarleton State and awesome. anatomy and physiology at Panhandle State. That's so. awesome. Well, I, and again, you college guys, and I have so much respect for the job that you do and the price that you pay to have to end up with the success you've had because you went from Fort Hay State to Colorado School of Mines, University of Chicago, Illinois Wesleyan offensive coordinator, head coach there at Illinois mm -hmm. Wesleyan, Iowa Wesleyan, sorry, Iowa Wesleyan, then Panhandle State, head women's golf coach also, Tarleton State offensive coordinator, head women's tennis coach, um, Central Oklahoma, for a year and then we get into southern illinois and that era of southern northern minnesota 
and back to Southern. So it's an impressive resume. You've had a lot of experience. You've been a lot of places. And everywhere you've been, Coach, you've done it at a high level. So I'm going to I'm going to get to my questions now and I welcome you again and tell you, uh, just let's start off and let's talk about real quick your childhood, growing up in Kansas, uh, being a multi-sport guy, what your family situation was. Well, my, I was a, I had three older sisters, youngest one 10 years older than me, so I was the, the only oh, son wow. and uh, lived in kind of an older person part of town and uh, so people kind of wondered what was wrong with the poor kid because I spent a lot of time in the front yard throwing balls to myself and, oh, wow. you know, yeah. letting the cedar tree tackle me yeah. and, and uh, broke a lot of front plate glass windows, throwing balls at the steps and, you know, scooped the driveway, shot a ton of hoops, had plays off the, you know, bounce it off the tree stump and, you know, <laughs> roll in the garage and, and want it, that kind of stuff. So that was kind of my initial thing and then uh, had a guy Gary Herman was my junior high basketball coach was really kind of the first time I was like this is this is cool yeah because um, I had I had two brother-in-laws I had a brother-in-law that was a state wrestler won a state championship football other brother-in-law that was uh, probably one of the best athletes from our town oh, wow. uh, there was a elite triple jumper at Fort Hayes so kind of had guys to look you yeah. know look at I was like hey that's what's out there um, and then, uh, you know, pretty much just that was kind of what you did. Were your um, sisters athletes? No, that was kind of the time when they, you know, yeah. it was cheerleading and dance and, and weren't a lot of uh, options. That time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's like whatever, 1968, 69, yeah. something yeah. like that. Um, so you you get to high school and you're a multi-sport guy in high school, but were you? Basketball, football, did you know early on football was your thing or was it every, you liked everything? I, I really liked, my dad was an official. Oh, my, wow. my dad officiated junior high and high school, or not junior high, but junior college and high school basketball and football. So I rode around in the station wagon and saw a bunch of games yeah. and, you know, heard about players and, yeah. and that type of thing. And um, really just kind of naturally just, kind of through osmosis got the bug to hey, I want to play and uh, and and had you know had a great high school coach that was very team oriented um, he was our shop teacher um, I think I got a D in his class but uh, there's still a project probably <laughs> at the school that I didn't finish yeah. but um, coach Becker was awesome and uh, actually uh, what might what Gwen thinks is wrong with me, my wife, is when I was a freshman, uh, I got completely knocked out. Um, my folks were at the horse races in Nebraska, and uh, it was this is changing times. Got a screwdriver, put in, you know, put in the mouth, put on an army cot, thrown in the back of Coach Becker's F-150 truck to the local center. Went home to my grandma and Coach Becker came to see me, you know, whatever, two, three hours later. Well, my grandma knows nothing about athletics yeah. at all and proceeds to just undress Coach Becker like these coaches and they, yeah. you know, they let this happen to yeah. these kids. And, was uh, it a hit? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, for whatever reason, I was, I don't know, I think I was playing safety and yeah. Hit old Bobby Eggers, who was about 100 pounds heavier. You remember was, his name? I was, like, I was like a 120 pound freshman. Yeah. Um, yeah me I was too. like a 148 pound senior. You I sound mean, like me. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, and just, you know, just kind of lived through <laughs> those kind of things. And then uh, in basketball, um, just played with some really good yeah. guys and, uh, you know, you know how those games stick in your head. Oh yeah. We lost to the same team two years in a row to go to state oh, in basketball, wow. and I was the point guard and couldn't knock down the 14 footer from the you know the inside the two one two zone. Yeah. And uh, that's just always stuck with me. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, and then you know track just kind of did everything. Yeah. Uh, was it a small school? Yeah, we were a two. It, we were a two A, but 
back in those days, there wasn't district play. I got you. So we were a 2A school in a 3A and a 4A league. Oh, wow. And so to get to playoffs and things that we did, like when I was a senior, was was pretty, yeah. you know, you had to have a pretty good, pretty good team. But, uh, but just, you know, got the opportunity to play um, early uh, football-wise. Um, I played baseball in another town, mm. our, our cross-county rivalry, which was a neat experience, mm. you know, going and yeah. playing with guys that, you know, yeah. hated you, you know, when you played against them. But uh, had, a really good, had a really good senior year in high school football. Um, Coach Becker kind of, he had won some state championships, and we were too tight in, full house, backfield, you know, just yeah. bash it. <laughs> and... Uh, I was a thrower. I mean, I, you know, Lenny Dawson. And, oh, yeah. You know, Daryl LaMonica and all those dudes. And my dad was that guy in the stands going, throw the ball, throw the ball. And So uh, they were doing it back then, too. Oh, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even and, back in that era. Yeah. Um, yeah. The precursor to the helicopter guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and Coach Becker was, he, I mean, he was cool about it because, yeah. like, I did in his class. I very seldom worked on projects. I usually sat in his office and like looked yeah. through playbooks and did that kind of stuff. And uh, but anyway, kind of turned it loose and like we had like a hey, we're gonna we're gonna throw the ball here. You, Mackey, you do this. Hey Miller, I had a six seven kid who was a great oh, basketball yeah. player. I was like, hey, you run the fade. Bell review and I, you you guys swing and. Draw and, plays uh, in the dirt. Pretty much. <laughs> Bottle caps. Pretty and much. Um, yeah. yeah, it was. I love it. it, it and it, and it just kind of it kind of snowballed. And, and so you great. get recruited at, at Fort Hayes State, but were you recruited to play quarterback there? Yes. So you were. Yeah. 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 And I, yeah, I thought about this because I knew I was going to talk to you. Uh, the guy who recruited me, Bobby Thompson, was I still remember when he came to my house. He, you know, he was. Huge chaw tobacco. He was a little sawed-off dude from Oklahoma. You know, called everybody darling and sweetheart and, you know, said five and tan, you know, that kind of stuff. And I just, like, fell in love with the dude. And uh, so did my dad. You know, it's yeah. like, hey, you know, it's kind of like when you got the radio contract. You didn't even read it. It's just like, yeah, we're, we're in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, going to be the quarterback of the future. Yeah. And, you know, we throw the ball and you do that well. And ball Guy was a good recruiter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All that, so, you know, rolled in the driveway in the 280Z, you know, orange one. and uh, Just like really like hooked me there. And, uh, and then he left and went to become the AD at uh, South Dakota. Mm. And uh, the next guy, um, he's like, I, I think you can be a safety. And so redshirted, moved to safety. and. Played with some older guys that like were just awesome. Took me under their wing. Yeah. Kind, of, kind of showed me how to play college football. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tony Workman, who was an All-American, I mean, he would come out and cut me every day, you know, and just like, hey, <laughs> we're complaining about, you know, you're on this meat team over there, yeah. and he's just, yeah. just, but made made you a lot yeah, better player. But it, it's a it's a big transition, yeah. isn't it? I yeah. mean, it, you know, you're talking about yeah. helped you make that transition, but it it's tough. On a lot of high school kids, a lot of kids I, I had go off and play college ball, struggled with that transition. It yeah. takes time and it takes, yeah, it takes yeah. a heck of a lot of sacrifice and maybe a mentor like that yeah. to help you make that. Well, and, and kids and people sometimes don't realize that, like, when you're at a smaller school, it was like somebody asked me, I remember first practice, I'd never heard of seven on seven or pass shell because mm. at our practices, the varsity went out on offense and played against the JV for however long, yeah. and then you flipped it over, yeah. that was practice. That was practice. And uh, I, I don't know, I might have set a school record for interceptions for seven on seven. I was like, you know, they're like, God, the poor kid's terrible, man. Why did why, we get him? <laughs> yeah. Um, so from there, you, what gave you the coaching bug? Like, what is it that, when did you know, and uh, you're playing ball, and, and did, was it already in there? Was it in there in high school? Was it... Yeah, you know, looking back, I think it, it kind of was, yeah. you know, just little things. It's like, that's probably what I should have known I was going to be doing. And uh, Dr. Arbogast was an instructor in the in the PE building, and he grabbed me one day, and he's like, hey, you, you need to be a PE major because you're, you're a coach. And uh, a couple of those older guys, one of them, a guy named Jeff Briggs, who's now the uh, – 
dean of life sciences at Fort Hayes, great dude. Uh, he had become a GA and an assistant coach, and you know, just kind of always looked up to that. It's like, hey, that, you know, that's a good deal. And then Coach Thompson had came back. The guy who recruited me had came back my senior year as the head coach, and uh, he, I don't know, a couple of weeks left in the season. He's like, hey, I want you to awesome. be a graduate assistant. Yeah. Yeah. Really didn't have any idea what that entailed, but you know, kind of. <laughs> they they don't tell you. Here's a you list of names, and you know, well, hey, all that tape that's in that room stuck to those walls. You know, figure out how to put that together and do the highlight films and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, because I did, and completely respect what high school teachers and high school coaches do. Because I that was back when you had to student teach. It was yeah. mandatory. Yeah. I. I went to Kennedy Middle School and a guy named Bob Blazer had had a student teacher for like 18 years in a row. So I just got the manila folder of, you know, mimeographs, You're going to do this. Yeah. And it was, I thought it was going to be easy. Oh my God. Yeah. I was like, I'll never do that. Yeah. And kind of spun me into like, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. This deal. I, you know, I, I kind of have a similar story in that I don't, I, I look back and wonder why I didn't know coaching was going to be in my life till later. Because it's there. As I think back over my, my early career co you know, in high school and in college, and it wasn't until my third or fourth year of college that I, I committed to teaching and coaching. I mean, it, it yeah. literally went to community college and still didn't know. And I wonder why I didn't know. Because yeah. now it's so obvious what I should have been pursuing. And um, you feel that way? like Yeah, and sometimes don't you think it's just... Though you know, you just the path that you're on, those yeah, opportunities get presented so. to you, and yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, that's my decision, but now you got to really commit to it, yeah. And that was kind of you know, moving all those places. It wasn't really like I had a plan of like, hey, I you know, I can be a head coach at 28, yeah, um, but it just kind of happened that way. I mean, in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, I, I'd love to be a position coach at you know, Division One, KUK State, somewhere like that that I'm at, you know, Colorado School of Mines right now. And, um, and every one of, it's weird how I've heard you talk, every one of those moves, yeah. when you look back on it, was just a, a ricochet to something it's true. that just like has been a blessing. Isn't it funny, the people you encounter, the, what you learn at each of those stops prepares you for the next one. And, and sometimes it's not always the best situation, but you still get something out of it. And, and uh, I, I thought Iowa Wesleyan, you know, you, after, after you, you make some stops and you end up at Iowa Wesleyan, am I right? That is shortly after Hal Mummy yeah. was there. Yeah, so what happened was a guy named Charlie Moot was Hal's D coordinator. Okay. And Mike was there, Leach, as the right. OC. And I had started to talk to Coach Moot, and it like, you know how these things go down, is in a matter of like two, three weeks, Hal and Mike, they go to Valdosta. Right. Well, I ended up taking the job at Iowa Wesleyan. So there was like, there was about a month of carryover in there where I was around those guys. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you talk about impactful people that you just come across yeah. you know on that path and uh coach mummy and then when i became the head coach at iowa wesleyan he was he was an awesome mentor i mean you know a guy you know how you hear stories of sure. you know guys that and then you, you know you can't get in touch with them he was he always answered the phone and and uh and all his stories about mike leach are spot on yeah that well and, and for people who don't fully know i mean the air raid offense is, is a, a huge part of the college and NFL uh, offensive scheme, uh, you know, across the way. And, and those guys were the ones that kind of got it started at Iowa Wesley and Leach and Mummy. And, and then they end up, you know, the whole bunch of people now are in that coaching tree. It's massive. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I consider myself an air raid guy because I got involved in the through same Tony. offensive system through Tony Franklin. And so... Um, when I when I did I put this together and I saw you were there, I'm thinking there had to be. And I looked it up when Hal left and when yeah. you got there. That's fascinating that yeah. you were able to have that brush with those guys. Yeah, yeah. No. And you know that was pre-internet, so you know that connection to just have a voice and hear, you know, 
the six route and the yeah. mesh and you know hey how do you teach it and all those things because um, Dana Holgerson play yeah. ended up playing for me and Bill Biedenbaugh who's the line coach at Oklahoma was was our my center so Dana and, played for you yeah and wow, uh, I didn't yeah, know that yeah Dana Dana was something else man a great player yeah but he was always open and he's been the head coach at West Virginia he's been the head coach mm -hmm. at Houston, am I correct? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I mean he's that Nebraska he's now. had he's had quite a career. I've heard yeah. him speak it several times, and and he's part of that that coaching tree. That's really a yeah. cool and, cool thing. And how that all went down there is like when you watch the documentaries and stuff is spot on. Yeah, like that. I and mean Mike Leach, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you think those stories just can't be true, and yeah. he's such a care. He was such a character. Yeah. The 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 all time best is the how talking about. Mike took a phone call and I guess they had a meeting scheduled or something. He, he talks on the phone for like an hour and it was, he gets off the phone and Coach Mummy's like, God, who was that? And he's like, I had the wrong number. <laughs> but he talked to the dude for an hour. <laughs> but that's Mike Leach, man. Yeah. Classic Mike yeah, Leach. That's awesome. Yeah, just a, a cool influence and I, I love that story. I love, I did, it's something about you again I didn't know and, and I, I love that. So. You, you went through the process. You, tell me about being a head coach. So you, you spent time as an assistant, you become a head coach, then back to the assistant the rest of your career. What was that like? It was, it was probably one of the funnest years of, of my coaching career because it was finally to that point where it was like your time, mm. your schedule, how you wanted to do it, you know, with obviously, you know, all the influences and, you know, wanting to throw the ball a bunch. And, you know, it was just a really good fit. And, and also haven't been in it long enough that, Hey, I'm on a pretty good track here. You know, if I can, if I can do this at NAIA Iowa Westland yeah. with some of the connections, you know, maybe I can move and, you know, get to be a head coach back at Fort Hayes or, you know, higher. And, you know, just the nature of the business, you know, administratively, it was, you know, can't do this. Hey, we got to, you know, that. And so it kind of became a, a bad job, so to speak. D did you, but did you desire that again later? Did you ever want to pursue that? Or did you just become content with being a part of that, that uh, staff and being a part of a position? Yeah, it was, it, it was kind of just the process of it. You know, there was like, you know, being a coordinator, I was still, you know, and I worked for a couple of great guys that That's pretty much turned me loose yes. and allowed me to do that. And then, like, when I came to Southern and you working with Coach Kill, it was just, you know, because Coach Kill was like, you, you wanted your position group to be the best coach position group on the field. Right. I was working with quarterbacks, and, you know, it was, and when things started to, to go, it was kind of like, okay, this is – this is kind of my niche yeah. and, and have confidence in doing it well and kind of just the, the head coaching thing kind of dissipated. Yeah. Um, it and, comes with a lot of baggage, yeah. especially and, in the college level. And, and yeah. Coach, Coach Kill was great because that was one thing he always would tell me. He's like, man, I love having you on staff because you know what comes across my desk. Yeah. You know, you've done it. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's something that a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. Is, Today in football, you truly have at the Division One level. You got CEO co head coaches. You got I want to coach ball head coaches, yeah. and it's a hard it's a hard mix to yeah. get it all right. And and it's funny because I we sit back as armchair quarterbacks, you know, sitting back evaluating, wondering if, if he's meant to be a CEO guy. Should he not be yeah. more involved in the offense where he made his his reputation and where he's had success. And, and you hear this critique now of, should he stay involved in the offense or defense or should he manage the whole, because there's so yeah. much to manage yeah. now. And, and, you, and you can't discount the fact that you're always learning and the right. game's always evolving. But, you know, it's just like you look at Coach Leach, you know, for all those years, he was the guy. Yeah. He was calling the offense, um, you know, and then like Lavelle Edwards, you saw him become a guy who, Pretty much said, yeah. you know, hey, hey, no, you take it. But you think about one more thing about Coach Leach. I thought it's fascinating. Here's a guy that 
is running this air raid system, one of the founders of this offense, running it as good as anybody and producing some great players. And, and I look at guys that got this trifold play sheet, and, and yeah. mine became pretty large as well. And he's got like a note card. <laughs> so he's yeah. calling his offense off a note card. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes when I heard him speak, the simplicity of what He's a complex mind, I think, in some ways, but the simplicity with which he saw the game was his genius. Yeah. Well, and I've always thought about how good a teacher he had to be because there were no-name quarterbacks. You know, it right. wasn't like, the, hey, this is the five-star guy right. that, right. you know, yeah. Texas Tech got over, you know, yeah. USC. That's, that's a great point. It was just some point. guy that all of a sudden led the nation in throwing. That is a great and point. there had to be some substance to what those guys were being That's told true. and how they were made feel. And those Graham Harrell and Cliff oh, Kingsbury. One and, after I mean, another. Yeah, after I mean, another. every year, whoever yeah. took the job became one of the leading pastors in yeah. the nation. So yeah. um, let's talk about SIU. So you arrive in 2001, first impressions. First of all, did you know anything about SIU when you got here? Well, the, I knew that Jack Hartman had coached basketball here because Jack Hartman had actually coached football in Plainville, Kansas oh, wow. when my dad was officiating. That's random. <laughs> and I had went to Jack Hartman basketball camp all okay. through all all right. school. Okay. So, and, I, and I remember seeing Ivory Crockett run on yeah, like, world right, sports. Right. Those were kind of my, and Walt Frazier. Okay. The, that, that so was you about, knew something about, that yeah. was about the yeah. extent of yeah. my Southern Illinois knowledge. Um, but I came in on 51 and I was like, hmm. You know, Coach Kill told me this is one of the, you know, most progressive, you know, <laughs> mid-sized cities in Illinois. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. You know Coach Kill, yeah. he, he was good at that. And, uh, you know, came in the building and I was like, oh, wow. And, uh, you know, walked into football office. Tuke was on a folding chair running wires through the ceiling. And, you know, me and B.A. had two, you know, tables jammed together and a little office back there where track is now. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it was just kind of like, oof, man. And, and, and then, yeah, and people need to know the facilities at SIU today are not the oh, facilities that you inherited wow. in 2001. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, and then, the, you know, the first, like, I, I interviewed over the phone with Coach Kill for three hours, yeah. you know, to the point where, when I got up off the couch, Gwen's like, where are we going? How much is it paying? What level is it? She goes, I know we're, I know we're moving again. Yeah, she could tell. Um, but, uh, but it was like, hey, you, you knew the, the workload that it was yeah. going to take to yeah. get the thing going. And, but you could see, the, you could see the, the promise and, the, you know, and, and really coach, coach's enthusiasm that, hey, we can, we can make this one. You know, and, and the, it's funny to hear because I, I you know, interviewed Joel and uh, he was part of that early crew that was coming in. And I find it fascinating that most people didn't see that promise. Yeah. Most people didn't see that potential. In fact, lots of stories that Jerry Kill was going to be the last football coach yeah. SIU ever had. Yeah. And I believe that. I believe that to be true. I think that before you arrived, there was a sense that SIU was just going to end the program and move on and focus on yeah. other sports. And, and so to think that to hear you say that they believed and and you bought into that as well that there's promise and potential yeah. here uh, I love that yeah I love that because yeah. I've been I've been a lot of places where there was little or no hope from the outside and it, it took myself and a yeah. few others to say no we can we can do something here because a lot of people have been through the new hire doesn't work another yeah. new hire doesn't yeah. work and I think I think a piece of that that I thought about, was you know the the blind support that we got from Paul Kowalczyk, you know because yeah. I'm telling you, Killer would wear that carpet out. I mean you know <laughs> you know Coach. I mean he was hey I gotta have this or I'm walking. Yeah. I gotta have this or yeah. I'm walking. And and we got it and you know and uh, you know it was it, it really w it was a neat to be a part of. And I thought about this too. Just you know we all coach speak. You know, kids hearing the same Amen. voices, Amen. seeing the same people. That's right. The continuity of our staff through those years was was a huge thing. And, and, and really nobody, I mean, nobody really was looking to get out because that was the best job that we had, we had had. Well, that's a good point. You all came from situations where this was the best yeah. job. And so, yeah. And, and, but I think, 
I can tell you this. From the first time that I met Coach Kill and his staff, you guys, all you guys, um, we could tell something was different. Yeah. And, I, and, and I wasn't around you every day, but I assume that the players could sense that. There was a, there was a no doubt in my mind after getting around you, this thing is going to turn. Yeah. Uh, you, could, you not only could hear your words and you're all on the same page, but you could sense it. I, I can't explain that to someone not in coaching maybe, but I could tell yeah. something's different. Yeah, and that, you know, and, and I, I, I think back, I've told the stories of the first spring that we were here, you know, just how you're able to coach now. You know, we used to call it, you know, coaching hard, you yeah. know. But there was some, there was, you know, there was, you had to pay for not doing the right things and, Wow, I mean, it was, it was a, it was kind of a <laughs> crap show. Uh, yeah, and I think we came, we came in six or seven Saturdays in a row when we first got here on Saturday morning at like seven, and you know, did the, yeah, you know, you missed class, you did this whatever punishment thing, and it was like, oh my God, you know, are we gonna ever? get this thing like going the right direction and yeah. uh, finally had a free weekend like got it you know got it done didn't have anybody nobody got in trouble nobody got yeah. in trouble yeah. nobody did anything wrong and uh, me and Lime Grover were at the laundry mat doing our laundry and just like you know just total yeah. decompress yeah and two comes wild-eyed running through he's like hey have you guys seen coach kill do you know where coach kills at and we're like, heck no I mean the first weekend off yeah and uh I don't know. We had a couple kids do something, you know, and it was like, oh, oh wow. no, you know, here we go again. <laughs> Short celebration. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but but really just for lack of a better term, cleaning house and, yeah. and kind of alluding to my my story was a lot of people don't realize, but Joel was just such a huge mm, piece of that, yeah. not his playing, but just his presence and his Joel being Joel. I mean. You know, my kids called him Sunshine from day one yeah. they met him. Yeah. But, you know, he was a captain for us and traveled his whole first year that he redshirted. It's fascinating. And yeah, uh, it's amazing. we knew we knew kind of what we had there. And uh, and he was, I mean, I've, I've told people, you know, a lot of us wouldn't be coaching and been able to do the things we did if we hadn't gotten Joel Samber so had I, him, had yeah, him here. I love this because you talked about Paul the AD at the top you don't turn this around without him saying yes to a lot of what Jerry's asking for so you got the support at the top you've got Joel a player and it doesn't get turned around if you don't have guys buy in buy in below you so you got the staff you got the top administrative people you got the players I mean it takes all of that oh, yeah. um, Coaches just don't turn programs around without all those pieces yeah. fitting. And, and I remember going to camp, bringing our team over for camp. Yeah, and some those were of the, awesome. So they were awesome. Some of the best moments of my entire coaching career were those staying in the dorms, immersing myself yeah. in football, and you guys running the show and really teaching us a lot about how to, how to coach our kids even better, taking us to another level. And I got to tell this story because... When I first met you, I was not in the air raid offense yet. And you are famous for your, your coaching lingo. You, you speak in a, an amazing coaching language that can be intimidating if you don't know the language. And so the, we, we would talk football sometimes, and you used to talk, and you would be saying smash, mesh, and shallow and stuff. I had to pretend I knew what you were saying. <laughs> I didn't know. I would be like, yeah, yeah, run that smash route. I'm like, I didn't know what it meant. So when I got into the Tony Franklin system, and then we met again later, and you start talking that, we're talking about the Y cross and the, and the stick, and, the, and all of a sudden, I was so happy that I could speak, coaches speak in the air raid offense with Pat Poor. You have no idea what that meant to me. And that, that's been a, something that's like been huge in my soul was setting those camps up and, oh, and getting those started and running them because so good because it truly like it made football better for southern illinois it did and, that, and coach it was did. always a big you know and camps have changed a ton even since then yeah but you know it was always like you know that's your summer and you know god we got all these camps and sometimes guys just kind of yeah that you know 
because we weren't making a lot of money doing no. it. But coach was always big on, hey, you you make sure they take something home with them. You know, they get something out of them. And I thought those, I thought those those camps, the way those were set up at that time, were those were awesome. So and, from that moment, when we went to your camp, we did the SIU drill for the next 20 years of my career when it was left hash, middle, right hash, off. Next group, left hash. Yeah. I mean, and, we, and as a coach, it transformed my play calling because what do most coaches do when they call plays in practice? They have the ball in the middle of the field and they can call whatever they want. But all of a sudden, when you start moving the ball left hash, middle, right hash, all of a sudden that play you want to run on the right hash doesn't work very good. So I had, so what that did is that transformed my play calling in the game. Another example was your ability to teach my kids and my coaches what it means to run a play, go full speed, and have less contact. Yeah. Stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, and you guys would ride our yeah. kids if somebody went down. And we were able to use that the next 20 years and practice hard, but practice safer, keep yeah. our kids healthy. That's just two things I can think of yeah. that were transformative for me as a coach in this yeah. program at Marion. Yeah. Those were things that I look back on once after I was done. It was like, yeah, that, that was those were that was a good thing, you know. You guys and uh, your energy, your commitment yeah. to us was amazing. Yeah, and and it was neat to see like your program grow and develop from from those yes. those roots, oh, you know, and 100%. Dan at Mount Vernon and. Ray you Coley. Know, um, oh, yeah. Modern I mean, day. There was a bunch of yeah. programs that like really took off, and it was, it was cool to yeah. see. Um, uh, kudos to you. And, uh, you know, we could talk hours. But I, I got to mention, you know, you were, the, you were, the, you were Joel Sambersi's quarterback coach, mm -hmm. as well as Nick Hill's quarterback coach. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, if nothing else, that is an amazing legacy right yeah. there because two transformative players, and you're the position coach for them, you came and, and helped me here at Marion with some camps, and Matt Brown, my quarterback, was part of those camps. I mean, your, your, your ability to coach quarterbacks was... And I'll never be able to say enough about either one of those guys because, yeah, yeah they, and they were, they were very coachable, but they made themselves really, really good players. And, and they had, they, I always said it, and people would ask me about Joel and Nick, and it's like, they both had... It. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and right. they oozed it. Yeah. And that was that was huge. I mean, not even as much on the field as off the field. Yeah. I mean, they were they were those that guy that, yeah. you, that you have to have, and especially at that at position. that position. Yeah. And you know, because Joel was a midline option quarterback at Liberty High School. Yeah. You know, um, but like you know, and the trust thing with both those guys was you know it. That was a that was a neat situation because Coach Kill being the head coach, and he would, you know, bad cop, good cop, you know, and you know they'd come to me and I always had to be the the good cop, you know. I was like, hey, don't listen to hey, you just you're fine, just, yeah, you know, yeah. And they got that right away. I can but, tell. But the, but there were times too when like they you know, and they had to feel it that. We were all Coach Kill, myself, Rob, everybody. Hey, we're we're all in with you. You're yeah. you're our guy. You're the flag carrier. Joel and, talked uh, about and in our well. in our interview that moment when basically Coach Kill let him know you're, you're the guy, yeah. and it changed him. But maybe I think Coach Kill knew he wasn't ready for that until a certain time, and then he said, "Okay, yeah, he's our guy, and Pat will take care of him," and and. I assume, you know, he came off, Jerry came off as a guy that let his coaches coach. Once, once you did what you were supposed to do, he let you guys coach. And, boy, you could, you could sense everybody was bought in. Yeah, because the third guy that never gets mentioned that was in that transition of both those guys was John Carnes, probably the best backup quarterback ever in oh, history. Wow. Of, yeah. Because he literally did it with 20% of the reps and – Right, and when he got opportunities, was very, very good. Yeah. Um, and what could have been for him if he hadn't been by? Right. <laughs> well, he yeah. he got the Liz Frank in the summer, that Nick took it over. But, yeah. but we we all were talking about Nick Hill yeah. when he was coming. You know. Yeah. 
coming behind Joel. Let's talk about the move. So you're at Southern, you're having success, you've you transformed the program, the turnaround has occurred, and then the decision comes to go to Northern. So tell me about, did you know that he was be, Jerry was being pursued? Did you know this was a possibility? And, and, and how did you respond to that? Didn't really know that one's that Northern specifically, yep. but those last couple of years, you know, it would always, it would come up, you know, Central Michigan or, sure. you know, U of I or, you know, and you know how assistants are. Yeah. We'd all sit in that room and be like, yeah, that place is dumb, you know, <laughs> God, they're terrible. You know, we got to do it again. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Cause it's exhausting. Yeah. Because at that point, you know, year five, six, seven, I mean, that, that yeah. thing's clicking. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a great situation. And, uh, when that went down, like Tuke, Tuke and Rob Reeves and, and I, we were going to stay together here because um, I did. I, I fell in love with this place. I mean, it was, yeah. you know, the best job I'd ever had. and It was going good. And family. Family. Yep. You know, kids are doing great, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, and then when whoever the AD was at that time was like, hey, we're going to do an, oh, coffee guy, Mocha. He, uh, it's like, we're national searching this thing. It was like, not going to happen yeah. too. And so, and, and coach had left it open. Hey, I want you to come, yeah. you know, and yeah. that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it was, it was just, you know, what you signed up for. Yeah. I mean, you know, went in there and coach Novak, great coach. Great guy. But, yep. and, you know, it was. God, here we go again. Yeah. You know, so there deal. was another culture change again, mm -hmm. even though they had had a good coach. But yeah. but it was um, you guys got in there and, and, and had pretty quick success yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. It, it was weird thinking back because for whatever reason, coach would always say, you know, hey, I'm going to sign a five year contract, but we really only got three, yeah. you know, and but those third years were like, boom, you know, just yeah. took off. And, yeah. Uh, but the Northern was how many years? Three. Three years. Yeah. And then off to Minnesota. Yeah. And again, did you see that coming or was that a, a, it seems like just a natural progression from Southern. I mean, that just kind of fits a natural progression. I'm thinking as a yeah. coach, as a program. Yeah. We knew, we all knew that coach was getting in that, yeah. that circle of, you know, agents talking and this job open and that job open. Um, but again, specifically Minnesota, no. And then, yeah. you know. Uh, when we were, I, I always sat right behind coach on the bus and we were coming back. We'd gotten beat by Miami of Ohio in the MAC championship game in Detroit and phone rings and, you know, Crystal's 14 and, you know, Tasha's, you know, what, you know, and it, it was like, yeah, we're, something's, something's going down. Something's going down. And uh, so got the Minnesota job and then, you know, of course we all stayed, uh, you know, and coached the bowl game and, Flew back from Boise and crawled in a van and <laughs> drove to Minneapolis. What's your What's your first impression of the University of Minnesota? Um, it was eh, just being honest with you. It was kind of because uh, we were all get, you know get the whole Big Ten thing, yeah, and all that, and uh, was great, you know. And then kind of you know once you got your feet on the ground and you know met players and yeah. it, it was like. Wow, here we go again. You know, mm. this one's gonna be yeah. this one's gonna be some work. Was um, there a noticeable difference between uh, I mean, obviously facilities and funding and I mean northern to, to Minnesota, could you what could you tell the difference like, wow, this is Big Ten football? It would well, there was a little bit of a bump yeah. from northern, but you saw right away the discrepancies of the upper half um you know just in terms of you know what our indoor looked like at that time and you yeah. know just offices and and of course that was that was something that tracy and coach kill they were you know all those people were really good about it was like hey we gotta yeah we gotta we gotta get this stuff branded Absolutely. and we gotta get this you know and the slogan and you know all of that and um i think i think the thing that probably was as good as anything was just that all of us had been together so long that you knew when that expectation got set, hey, we're going to Minnesota. Yeah. We, we got to figure out a way to win the Big Ten. Yeah. You know? Um, and it just, 
put your, put your head down and went to work. I think it's, it, it fascinated me then, it still does. The staff arrives at Southern, they stay together, they rebuild, they go to, most of you go to Northern, and again, stay together and rebuild. Most of you go to Minnesota. That's so rare yeah. to see that, that whole staff trajectory and end up at Minnesota. And again, um, biggest challenge of all of them? Or was it easier to make the transition because? It was probably easier just because we had done it. Mm. You know, uh, somewhat. That's interesting. I yeah. mean, because you knew everybody so well. I mean, yeah. you knew what kind of kids Rob Reeves wanted to coach. You knew what kind That's... of kids that, you know, Coach Kill wanted to recruit. And you knew what kids you needed to recruit, you know, because there, there was, that, that was evident. You yeah. Know, Mac to Big Ten, you know, if you're going to compete with Wisconsin and Michigan yeah. and Ohio State and Iowa, that kind of thing. Um, so really the first one here was, was oh, that's probably interesting. The, yeah. the toughest one because it was, I mean, it was kind of ground zero from scratch. Got to give you some props because you, at Minnesota, uh, wide receiver coach, and then you went to running backs and you coached a record setter in David Cobb. Yeah. So I love this story that position guys you coach have, have success, man. And, I, and Big Ten Special Teams Coach of the Year, I did not know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Congratulations, and, man. And that was kind of, that was kind of a surprise because uh, um, we did, we, we had a, a bunch of just really good special teams kids and, and uh, you know, all those other coaches, you know how we had it set up, I mean, they, they coached, yeah. you know, with parts of it, and um, but yeah, that was a, that was kind of a surprise to me because I, I didn't really I had done special teams before, but I didn't really consider myself a yeah. special teams guy, and part of that was because when you're the special teams guy and you're sitting at that table and they the kicker comes up, they're like, they look at you and you're like. <laughs> God, I got to evaluate this guy and make that decision. Yeah. That was not fun. I, uh, I had the honor and privilege of speaking to some of Coach Kill's years to the team pregame. And I remember sitting in there having breakfast on a Saturday morning and I had, you know, Coach Kill would say, you got five minutes. <laughs> so I knew I had to stay at five minutes. But the, the feeling in that room and each coach would stand up who's in charge of a certain special team and Gosh, that was influential on me to yeah. see that your head coach was bought into special teams. Yeah. And I could tell in those breakfast meetings as we're eating and, and preparing for the, for the game, they would talk about each, each special team you know, individually. And gosh, it, I went back and would tell my coaches, listen, you know, we've, this, is, this is a huge, we all know it's a huge part of the game. I give it lip yeah. service but you gotta you gotta commit to it yeah. it is a big deal i'm sure at minnesota that had to be one of those things you could make a difference in against yeah. other people yeah and it and and it was as we were trying to grow that program into being one of the upper echelon that was the opportunity for a lot of those young kids to yeah. to show out and and play and travel and um obviously your rosters were bigger in the Big Ten, yeah. so you had that opportunity, yeah. you know. That was always, that, those were some of the hardest meetings, toughest decisions, like, you know, in, in the Valley or the Gateway when we were in it, you could only travel so many guys. And right. like, you know, come come Wednesday, you had to, mm. here's, our, here's our dudes, and it's like, well, if that kid, he's on three special teams, and, you know, well, if that kid's a backup. Yeah. And he goes down, he's got to play, you yeah. know. Yeah. And it was, I always thought staff-wise, we did a good job with, you know, getting kids to buy into, yeah. hey, you, you got to get better at your position because yeah. you can help us a lot on special teams yeah. as a redshirt sophomore. And, you know, not necessarily you're buying your time, but here's how you can contribute right now. And, and uh, you know, had some... Like I said, had some guys that that's how they made their, you know, made their name. But, you know, I, 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 I fully believe that because Jerry took it serious and his staff was bought in, 
it helps the players have oh, buy-in yeah. knowing oh, yeah. this matters at Minnesota. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure everywhere yeah. you've been, it's mattered. So that's well, well, and just the old deal. You know, if you're seeing it, it's getting coached. That's right. Or, or if you're not seeing it, right, it's not getting coached. Yeah. You know, yeah. that whole deal. And um, that was one thing with with coach and and Nick. Nick does a great job detail wise mm. um, as far as his practices yeah. and how you know it, it's changed a little bit. It really has. I mean, yeah. it's it's a lot more situational mm. now than it was whatever that was 14, 15 years ago. Um, but because uh, that was that was something that I was going to bring up to you, how just you know the coaching aspect of it is you know seeing you know seeing things that you know hey that's a that's a coach martin trait right there you mm -hmm. know um or you know that's a that's something from practice yeah. that man it's great to see him do that yeah. you know because because you, you you say so much yeah. you know and and the other thing that like i know you and i will connect on this is like the terms that we've used over the years how those has changed, you know, it's like all of a sudden everything was culture. You know, yeah. it used to be, hey, yeah. you, yeah, man, your teams play hard. Now it's, boy, you got great culture. It's true. You know? It's true. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, you know, the physical part of it, you know, the different terms that now it's kind of like, hey, you can't, you can't say it that way now. No, you, yeah. You got to, no, it's true. You, you got to coach it this way. It's true. And, uh, Let's talk about your return to SIU. I mean, that's, that's a huge deal. So Minnesota uh, is over, and, and the staff kind of goes their separate ways for the first time in 10 years or 15 years. And so you end up back at Southern. So, yeah. And you're going you're gonna to coach with Nick Hill, which is a cool story in itself. Yeah. So tell me about the decision to come back and coaching for Nick. Well, it, it's weird how, like, Mike DeBoard, who won a national championship at Michigan, coordinator, great coach, Kind of a mentor. Actually, the the run and shoot that originated from Franklin College, Red Foe, Mike DeBoard was on that staff. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that showed me the run and shoot. But anyway, he told me one time in in that, you know, when we got let go and all that, and about taking the high road, and he's like, You gotta take care of yourself. Yeah. First and foremost. Amen. You you've got to make yourself happy. You can't sit and stew and, you know, be disgruntled. And, and year previous, when, because I bought so many houses and sold so many houses <laughs> that, like, after Northern, it was like, hey, we're done buying houses, you know, just like, you know, just getting kicked, you know, like, <laughs> God, we didn't make any money on that yeah, one. Yeah. And uh, one night, I was like, go in, you know, if crap hits the fan, we really don't have anywhere to go. Um, and so Taylor actually found the house out mm. of Lake of Egypt, and that was gonna be a yeah. retirement house. Yeah. And so we had that, and uh, I was, I was kind of at that spot at my age and being a position coach, a skilled position coach that, and I had been a Jerry Kill guy, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and so it was kind of like, you know, just it wasn't going real good. And I didn't really want to be a head coach, and I knew those would be hard to get. And I, I almost pulled the trigger on just going to Texas and being a Texas high school coach because I think those are great jobs. Yeah. And I had recruited down there, had some great relationships and some connections. And then uh, things kind of just started to spin, and you know, job came open here. And, Nick called and I was like, yeah, I'll, whatever. Awesome. I said, I'll do whatever. So yeah. I think I went from being running back coach to wide receiver coach to tight ends coach in a matter <laughs> of like three days. It was like, you know. Um, but you can do it all, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but and, and honestly, like one of the best, funnest staffs experiences I had in those 38, 39 years, um, you know, just being around. Yeah. Um, and people don't realize, I mean, John Van Dam is with Tampa Bay. That's right. You know, Nick Williams was with the Giants. Yep. You know, I mean, there's there's been some guys pop in and out that, you know, yeah. big time, great coaches. Yeah. Um, but uh, what's it like being the position, Nick Hill's position coach and then working for Nick Hill? You know, it was <laughs> it was really it was really kind of a neat vibe because yeah. 
I didn't have enough ego myself to be like, this is going to be weird, yeah. you know, you know, Nick's not going to listen to me, you know, it was, it, 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 it was, it was just, I think the previous relationship yeah. and Nick being the person that he is, yeah. it just, it just, it was kind of a match made. I'm just you know? telling you, man, he had to be thrilled to have someone yeah. like you with yeah. all the experience and yeah. that connection. Well, and, I mean, and, and he got my quirks and weirdness yeah. and, and, and kind of, <laughs> you know, kind of like yeah. some of that, yeah. you know, cause uh, I've sat through a ton of those staff meetings, you know, it's just yeah. like, you know, it's like you, you start figuring out, you know, whose buttons you can push right, and right. all that. Cause if it's not fun, it ain't going to be good. Amen. And, and that's, that's the whole key. And he gets that. Yeah. And, and yet you can, you know, you can still have that, that sense of urgency, yeah. but still enjoy it. And, and, uh, and that was even like at the end, I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, it, I didn't retire because I was worn out, tired, anything else. It just kind of, kind of got to the point where it's like, I've done, I've done this. Yeah. That's all I've ever done. Yeah. And I want to, I kind of want to go be that quirky me, you know, do, do Full stuff. Time. That, yeah. Do stuff that I've been wanting to do for a long time, you know? And, and uh, but no, coach Hill was awesome. And I mean, he, pretty just much so, hands so that off. was kind of the decision and learned to... and learned a lot of stuff yeah. from him i mean well, he is he's that, that's something we were talking about like leech and you know often you know the triple some of those guys and you're you're way closer than i am on it, but just the intelligence that some of these guys you know mcveigh and i've heard mike mccarthy and it's just like you know they can pull a play from a preseason game yep. and 2017 yep. Yep. and run it. They can. And it's just, that's amazing. I've seen Sean McVay get tested on that and be asked about a, a certain call, third and nine, week seven, such and such. He'll know the play and he'll oh, yeah. tell you the result of yeah. it. And I'm like, that is unbelievable. Yeah. And can coach it to you. Yeah. 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 And yeah, that's fascinating. That's, that's, that's something that like just towards it, towards the end, I was like, I couldn't, you know, People would ask me, like, I can't remember what we called two quarters ago, let alone like game three. I'm like, I'm in, the, I'm in the, in the moment. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. So, uh, it's awesome. You retired here. You found the retirement place. You end your your career there, and you're full time. You now. Um, how's that been? It's been awesome. Yeah. I actually uh, kind of working retired. A uh, guy that I got in college coaching back in like '92. Uh, I had always talked to over the years and he's like, Hey, you ever get tired, you know, want to do, you know, this, yeah. this solar renewable energy gig is yeah. a pretty good deal. So yeah. I got involved in that and that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that gig has been fantastic. And, and doing some sideline reporting. Yeah. And yeah. some ESPN plus yeah. commentating. Yeah. Which that, is that was, you know, how those opportunities just come along. It was like, you know, yeah. they called that day and it was like, Hey, would you like to do an ESPN uh, color? for the game and I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it was not, quick not, answer, no yeah. questions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were like, I was like, well, you know, how do I prepare? You know, I said, you know, who am I going to be working with? You know, I mean, I mean, immediately went into coach mode, you know, it's like, I yeah. gotta, you know, I gotta get prepared. And, uh, the guy's like, Hey, we've heard a lot about you. you probably your biggest problem is going to be, you can't over talk the play by play guy. <laughs> And because I went up there to Luke, I'm like, hey, I said, can I get on your PFF account and start looking at like third down targets? And so he's just like, whoa, whoa, stop. whoa, pump the brakes. He goes, you're way ahead of the curve here. He goes, you show up on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but but you've was, enjoyed that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And uh, going to do, I think, going to do all the radio next year. Good for you. Um, and that work and working with Mike and, and Luke was you know, how you, something new and you, yeah. you know, you always great guys to learn yeah. from. And, and you were uh, great, by the way, I was well, doing a great you. job. Uh, I loved it. I only, I only kind of, Luke only scalded me one time in the Idaho game. Uh, I like talked over, I'm like, Oh yeah, right there. Hey, hey touchdown. <laughs> he's like, Hey, let the play, you know, during the break, he's like, Hey, let those plays play out for right. sure. Before you comment on them. Is it hard? Like, is it hard to separate the coach from the play by play? Cause you're, you, you, you know, you're, plus, you know, the system, you're part of that, 
you were part yeah. of that staff, so I'm sure that's a... Yeah. The, the sideline gig, the thing that's cool about that is, is you truly can kind of coach speak it. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, because like during a break, he'll, I'll be like, hey, guys, they're loading the box up and they're pressing us. And I yeah. said, our guys with good vertical release, I said, we're, we need, we're going to start throwing the ball here. And, I know, love that. And then all of a sudden they're like, wow, that's a really good stuff. You know, yeah. they hit Isaiah, yeah. you know, like yeah. kinda, and, That's uh, a cool insight, though, yeah, that most sideline yeah, people, you know, yeah. I know Connor did a great job with it, but there's a lot of people just yeah. can't see that yeah. because of your experience. To, That's to paint, really cool. Like, and just being able to kind of paint those pictures, it's like, you know, talking about like, hey, that, you know, he's got a great jerk, you know, it's like yeah. you hear that on the radio and you're, you know. 60 year old person is like, what's he talking about? What's he about? talking what's about? A jerk. You yeah. know? It's like, well, he's yanking him. Yeah. He's got great hands. You know? <laughs> um, uh, before we go, I do want to mention family. You've got two great kids. Um, let's talk about them just a second and your wife. Uh, Gwen is athletic director, Carbondale. Does so an I'm, amazing job. Well, thank you. Uh, I know she's buddies with, with your guy over here, Marion. Mm -hmm. He's a great dude, too. He um, is. Great so, boss. I'm wearing a little bit more terrier stuff now than I'm sorry I, I to did hear before, <laughs> and it's black. It's not my favorite color. Uh, um, I say I'm more of a South Seven guy. There you now. go. There you um, go. All right. And and I have had opportunities to get back into coaching. Um, I was looking for a fishing team guy. Yeah. So right. No on that. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to go in on the uh, flag football either. Um, but no, Gwen does does a great job and has she's been an athletic director now going on probably 20 yeah. years yeah. Um, and loves it good that's her her way of impacting kids she makes um, it look easy by the way yeah if some some ad's look completely stressed yeah. out she looks yeah. so cool and calm she, all the time so it's funny quick story like like her like you know you think she's always that way but when i was getting ready to do the tv thing like i was trying to practice and so like she'd come home from work and i'd be like Wow, that was a great uh, thrust through the front door there, Gwen. She's down the chute. She <laughs> looks like she's going like third shelf in the fridge there. And she's like, stop, quit, don't do that. That's great. That's great. <laughs> um, and then Trevor, Trevor built a house, lives in Carterville. Uh, he's got a little girl, three-year-old Salem, and another one coming in July. And Taylor uh, has a two-year-old, Izzy. And then Riley, my son-in-law, is the basketball athletic trainer and great dude. Um, they live. We're gonna we're gonna have some conflict at some point. We've got Carterville and Murfreesboro uh -oh. uh, school-wise at yeah. some point down the road. Yeah. So, but grandparent now, which is really yeah, amazing. Yeah. Love doing that. That's good for you. Everybody always asks, like, what you know, what what do you you know, what do you want to do, like, be good at now? kind of want to just be a really good grandpa amen um because it's a good because dad wise and you know you you lived through it it's like you're parenting a lot of kids oh. you know at and, the time you're parenting right. your own you've yeah. got all these yeah and uh, and that's what i always i always tell people that gwen and southern people in southern illinois did a great job of raising my kids yeah, they're good kids Taylor, they really are yeah. really really great kids you have a lot to be proud of and and uh Man, I'm so glad. I mean, obviously, we didn't get to everything. And, and people say, how come we didn't talk about the transfer portal? And, but, yeah. and maybe down the road we can do it again and talk yeah. about some specific things. But I want to tell you, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate the way you influenced my coaching career, you and the entire SIU staff at a, at a crucial time when I was trying to rebuild this program. And I had three really rough years of my first three and the SIU coaching staff did a lot to sustain me through that. And I know you had a lot to do with that transition that occurred between 2004 and 2005 for me. And I appreciate that. Yeah, Adam. well, I appreciate that. And I, I've said it for since I first met you, like just one of the best dudes I've come across. And I've been all over the country, uh, not just coaching wise, but just, well, just the aura and and the juice and and uh, like I said, I could I could do one of these every morning with you. Oh, we and, could and feel really good. We could do it, man. SIU's winningest assistant coach. That's a heck of a, a cool thing to to add yeah. to that that resume and that career and that legacy of yours. You've coached at a high level, great players, 
Uh, man, I, I don't think people know. We didn't even get in. You're an amazing recruiter. You walk in, you put people at ease, coaches, players. Uh, what, an, what a valuable member you must have been to, to, to Coach Kill and anybody you've Nick and everybody you've worked for. So, man, I appreciate you, brother. Well, thank I you. Do. I this do. This was and a thanks blast. Thanks for being here. You bet. I want to thank all of you for tuning in every week and thank Ross and Abby again and thank Swinford Media, thank Crown Brew and my buddies at Adrenaline for their support and their fundraising. Um, we look forward to you tuning in again next week. We'll have another great guest, and we appreciate Coach Poor being here and sharing his heart and, again, our opportunity to, to shed some light on a great coach, a great man, and a great career. Thanks for joining us.